So what we are doing is we're working on our upcycled torn pages sketchbook. So I started a little bit here with my first block. You can see there's lots of overlapping. Something that was, I think, in the instructions, but I forgot to tell you about is when you tear your paper, you don't want it to be any wider than three fingers because we want to have a lot of repetition and rhythm in our torn paper. So if you just had, you know, six big pieces, it's not going to have that. So, so don't go wide. I would say this is probably two fingers wide. You could go up to three, but not more than that. And am I putting my pieces of paper next to each other or overlapping them? Right. So overlapping. So that's important. And as you can see, you are allowed to use illustrations from books, not just the words. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to, to do this neatly, how to make a nice, neat binding on the back. It's also going to be, um, the whole back's going to be covered. If you can all make sure to look at this part, the inside should look like this. You should have a nice edge where it folded over. And I'm going to do a specific demonstration on your corner, but that's what the corner should look like on the inside. Okay. So I'm going to do a little bit here and I'm going to flip it over and show you the corners on the back side. I did want to show you a couple examples from last year and one student from today. So this one has seen some better days. It's kind of, it needs a little TLC, but he took a book that had these illustrations and incorporated it in, which I thought was pretty cool. One was not finished, but again, took something from a medical journal and then, and it started to incorporate images. This one, the, the craftsmanship was a little bit rough, but I did like the idea of incorporating a little bit of watercolor. So as you're working later on, if you want to do that, you can. And then this one, Tyreek is working on from our class and he was working at home. And so what did he do to his paper? He burned it, um, which I think looks really cool. And then have this image as sort of a centerpiece. You can't light things on fire in here. But if you wanted to do something like that, take some pieces home and then bring them back tomorrow, you could, okay? And let me just show you a few things that are important for craftsmanship that sometimes people forget. So look, look up here. I'm taking this old book that was discarded from our, our library. And then I can decide what I want to use. I think maybe I want this frog to be in there, some of these words. Now, would I want to just tear this all together efficiently, or do I want to take my time and let the tearing be part of the process? Take my time, right? So I'm listening to the sound. I'm enjoying the texture that I'm creating. I'm going to put a border around this frog so that I can overlap some more pieces. pieces ready. I'll show you a little bit here on the front as far as getting the cover looking nice and neat, the flat part and the edge, and then I'll show you the corner on the back side. So everybody, this might sound like common sense and like you don't need me to tell you this, but it's better to hear it again and not need it than not hear it and wish you had heard it. So when I'm doing this, do you see how this side is more, it's got more words on it than this side? Can you guys see that? So I'm going to put the glue on the side that doesn't have as many words. Watch this and tell me what I've done wrong as far as craftsmanship. Okay, there's glue on it and it's going to stick, but what is not going to stick? The edges. That's why we got the white paper is you can go off the edges and make sure it's fully covered. Okay, then I like to do different directions for my words to make it more interesting. So I'm going to have this go a different direction. Um, so first, watch this. First, I'm going to make sure all my edges on the flat part are down solid. What am I going to do? Am I going to cut this off? Fold it, right. The reason I want to fold it, why? there's two reasons I want to fold it. What are they? It'll look nice, right? It'll be good craftsmanship. And what's going to happen to that edge? It's going to be hard. It's going to be strong. It's going to be twice as thick as before. So now all of a sudden, instead of being just a thin piece of paper, it's a, a really solid cover. I fold all those over and you'll do that everywhere on the front. I'm going to flip the back just so I can show you how to do a corner. Okay. So this is a tried and true method. And 
I think I want this side that says um, bad luck to show, so I'm going to put this on here just like normal, making sure I go off the edges. Okay, now watch this part very, very closely. Do you see, this is the corner, right? Do you see how there's just a little bit of the corner showing right now? Yeah? And then do you see how there's still just a little bit more? And now it's right on the corner exactly. You see that? Okay, so that's where you're going to want it. And you want it to be at a 45 degree angle. We want it to be like this, just barely kissing the corner. The first thing I'm going to do is rub down the whole flat front part. Then I'm going to open it. That's what the inside looks like. Do you see how it's at a 45 degree angle there? So this is going to cause it to be nice and neat and lovely. See that? And you see how those edges come together like that? So that's how you want to do it. That makes a really super nice professional looking corner. Okay. The only other thing I want to show you is the binding because I think you guys understand the edges, right? Thumbs up if you understand the edges. Okay, good. Can you guys see this? How nice and neat the binding looks there? I'm going to show you how to do it on the other side and then you'll be good to go. So, green. And if you run out of glue, what do you do with your glue stick? Trade it in for a new one. Do not throw it away. Okay. So on the binding, the number one mistake that people make is just not getting it pressed down hard enough on that edge. So what we're going to do here is, you remember that 45 degree angle deal with the corner? Same thing here. So get it there on the corner like that. Press the front flat part down. Should I just go like this and then stick the other side down? Is that going to be neat? No, instead I'm going to smooth it from one side to the next. So it's making a really good solid bond. You see how that made a nice corner? And then the same thing on this side. I'm not just going to smash it down. I'm going to roll it over the edge and then work my way. So you see how that's a great solid connection? And then what do I do with this piece? Do I cut it off? No hold it, right? So just like if you've ever done paper mache, which we will be doing since this is a sculpture class, um, the more layers you have, the stronger something is, right? Okay, so then the only problem is, do you see how it didn't cover the whole thing because of that 45 degree angle? So we're going to do it the same way the other way, and then we're probably going to have to put a little piece in there as well. In the future, I might put a little flat piece on there first just to cover up that and then do my 245. So one more. Um, but yeah, I had students last block finding pictures and kind of creating little stories out of the pictures they found, um, making cool sayings. So you do have a lot of freedom within this corn paper. So I'm taking it, going to the edge of the corner, rubbing down the flat side, rolling it across, rolling it down to the other side. And then holding it into the back side. And then there's this little piece right here. So I just got to put a little piece to cover that up, which I now know after a couple years of doing this, I think I'll put a little piece in there first next time. And again, once you get it covered, you also have options to add things like we looked at in the slide presentation. So you could add other things, other shapes, just have fun and be creative with it. Right. So does that make sense? Take a look in here again, just to be reminded, this is what the inside should look like. Okay. All right. So that is my demonstration on how to make a sketchbook with torn paper and excellent craftsmanship, getting the flat parts, the edges, the corners, and the binding. So if you have any questions at all, if you're my student in class, you can come up and ask me. Um, if you are in the land of YouTube, you can send me an email or write a comment. So thank you for sticking with me on this demonstration, and I hope you have a great day.